campaign, Clan Jade Falcon. The Jade Falcons targeted the cities of Humtulips and Olala. As a bidding ploy, the Falcon Khans included the Falcon Guards in their invasion force. Widely regarded as a Desgari unit after their defeat at Twycross in 3050, the Guards exceeded all expectations and brought their clan most of its successes on Tukiad. The Khan Guards' largely green 11th and 3rd armies opposed the Jade Falcons, supported by the veteran 394th and 77th Divisions from the 2nd and 12th Armies, and the 1st Army's 309th Division. Presenters Stinson and Jibby had never fought a major engagement and relied heavily on the Presenter Marshal's orders. The Com Guards allowed the Falcons to land virtually unopposed on the Presno Plain. During the clan's slow advance across the plain, the Presenter Marshal exploited his enemy's caution with a series of hit and run attacks by Presenter Gesicki's White Lions. The Lions caused a great deal of commotion, leading the Jade Falcons to believe that they faced several divisions from the 11th Army. The Falcons advanced toward Plough Bridge and Robin's Crossing, the two bridges spanning the Presno River. The Congard's 403rd Division met the vanguard of the Falcon Force near Robin's Crossing, led by Star Colonel Rad Hoyt's 1st Falcon Jaegers. The Jaegers crushed the 403rd, inflicting greater than 70% casualties. At the approach to the Plough Bridge, the Falcons met the 214th Division, the 388th Division, meanwhile, had dug in at the entrance to Robin's Crossing. The Jade Falcons' 305th Assault and 124 Striker Clusters launched the assault on Plough Bridge, while the 12th Falcon Regulars attacked the 388th. The 214th quickly broke under the massed fire of the 305th Assault Omnimex, but the 388th held Robin's Crossing until the Falcon Guards reinforced the 12th Regulars with a flanking manoeuvre. Comguard sappers destroyed both bridges as the Falcon troops crossed, costing the 12 regulars their command star and two full trinaries and the 305th assault, a trinary, and two binaries of Omnimax. As the Falcons tried to regroup, the 3rd Army's 11th and 201st Divisions took up positions on the opposite side of the river and battered the clans with long-range weapons fire and artillery. The Falcons then established a breakwater a short distance downstream. The Falcon Guards and 2nd Falcon Regulars managed to cross with their jump-capable mechs, losing 11 Omnimechs in the process. With the Comguards unprepared for such an attack from the side of their river, the Falcons easily captured both Robin's Crossing and Plough Bridge. The enemy's unexpected success forced the 111th and 201st Divisions to retreat toward Olala, pursued by the Falcon Guards and the 2nd Regulars. The Falcons soon reached the edge of the city. Olala appeared deserted and Star Colonel Kale Pershaw, observing the Falcon campaign from the clan's command dropship, suspected a trap. Responding to Pershaw's caution, Star Colonel Aiden Pride of the Falcon Guards sent the only heavy star of his unit, Alpha Trinary, into the city. As Alpha Heavy reached the city centre, the 77th Division emerged from camouflage bunkers accompanied by the remainder of the 111th and 201st Divisions. The Com Guards annihilated Alpha Heavy and forced the Falcon Guards to pull back to Alala's outer suburbs, though the fighting destroyed both the 201st and 77th Divisions. With the arrival of the 89th and 94th Falcon Striker Clusters and the 1st Falcon Velites, the beleaguered Falcons re-entered Alala in triumph. As the Falcon Guards hunted down the remaining mechs of the 111th, their sensors detected incoming dropships. The entire Humtulips garrison, a full six divisions of fresh Comguard troops, had arrived. Meanwhile, the Ghost Bears' withdrawal from Tukiad allowed the 4th Army to join forces with the 388th and 214th Divisions in a massive assault on the Falcon's base at Robin's Crossing and Plough Bridge. Falcon Khan Chistu committed Vow and Delta Galaxies to defend against this new attack. The clans held their ground until double misfortune would strike. The remnants of Presenter Luarca's 1st Army joined the fight at Olala, and a Comguard's airstrike destroyed Gamma Galaxy's supply depot at Robin's Crossing. The loss of this depot proved critical. All but the Falcon Guards had begun to run low on ammo and material, and so could no longer hope to defeat four Comguard armies. The Falcons withdrew to their dropships, with the 2nd Falcon regulars leading the way and the Falcon Guards fighting a fierce rearguard. The Comguards contested every step of the Falcon retreat, 
the particularly bloody battle between the 309th Division and the 2nd Falcon Regulars destroyed the 309th and came close to destroying the clan unit. The Comguards threw themselves at the Falcons until the last dropship lifted, only to be beaten back by the Falcon Guards. Because the Jade Falcons had captured the target city of Olala, however, briefly, and inflicted significantly higher losses on the Comguards than they suffered in turn, the Ilkhan and the Presenter Marshal ruled that Clan Jade Falcon had achieved a draw in their battle against Comstar. Hit and run on the Presno Plain. First strike. Excerpted from At Ground Zero, Memoirs of a Comguard by Sipora Thurston, Comstar Press, 3055. Presenter Gasicki's voice came over the line, sounding like Fock had lit a fire under her feet. White Lions, as soon as the clan infidels are in range, strike and hiss, then spring away. Bear your claws, they're closing in. In Comstar, one learns to decipher even the most obscure allegory, and I understand the presenter's orders all at once. Of course, some of the newer troopers had a little trouble with them. Infantryman Delavar, formerly a Lao soldier, voiced a plaintive request. Strike and hiss, presenter, could you be a little more specific? Kasiki answered, bubbling over with confidence. Strike, ambush, we should hit plenty of good targets for our first volley. The more we can destroy, the better. Hiss, fire everything you've got, even if you can't hit anything. Make them think an entire army is attacking them. Spring away, keep moving, break off and retreat before they can close and force you into a drawn-out slugfest. That way, we can force these clanners to use up their ammo and they've got precious little with which to resupply. Presenter Gazicki paused. Do you understand now, Acolyte Delavar? When Delavar answered, I could hear a feral smile on her voice. Yes, Presenter, I understand. Situation, Presno Plain, Tukiad. Presenter Gazicki's white lines were the first to meet the Jade Falcon forces, launching a guerrilla campaign against their foes. As the Falcons advanced onto the Presno Plain, the lions struck and then faded away before the clan warriors could engage them. The battle-eager falcons used up their stocks of ammunition, firing at these elusive targets, playing straight into the presenter marshal's hands. Assault on Robin's Crossing, facing fearful odds. Acolyte Cray grinned as his shot drilled a falcon Ryoken directly in the cockpit. The semi-portable PPC couldn't penetrate the armour, but a drunken lurch by the ungainly thing told him that he'd shook up its pilot. He laughed. <laughs> Those clanners might have better mechs, but their CO's got all the imagination of a lump of clay. No matter what, they just keep marching down to slug it out nose to nose of our gun emplacements. Cray didn't realise he'd spoken his thoughts aloud until adept Kristen V, and answered grimly from the neighbouring infantry bunker. Don't get too cocky, Brian. Sooner or later they'll figure it out, and then crush us like two turtles on an expressway. Cray's smile faded. You're as cheerful as ever. Just keep firing, soldier. After several minutes, the Falcons' jump-capable Omnis and Elementals began raining down missiles on the Comguard's right flank. The sheer volume of fire forced the Comstar mechs to retreat across the river, leaving the infantrymen who were manning the emplacements at the mercy of the enemy. Cray's smile had become a grimace that would have frightened most warriors. His PPC had lost most of its heat dumps two hits back, and he was dimly aware that the skin on his hands had stuck to the red-hot metal grip. He hadn't heard anything from Kristen for some time. He fired again and again at the Ryoken in his sights as fast as his weapon would cycle, but the mech strode toward him as though his attacks were no more than bee stings. His final shot, fired from an angle of almost 90 degrees, pierced the underside of the Omnimech's foot and destroyed the ankle actuator. Ignoring the burning pain in his hands, Cray grinned wider. At least one clan pilot would drop out of the Falcon's front line. Situation, Presno River, Tukiad. After their long crawl across the Presno Plain, the Falcons finally reached the two bridges spanning the Presno River. Too deep and swift to ford, the river could only be crossed at Ploughbridge and Robin's Crossing. The 12th Falcon regulars won the right to take the crossing bridge, but the 388th Division, the White Banshees, soon mired them down in a standoff. A frustrated and furious Star Colonel Aiden Pride led the jump-capable mechs of his command star in a flanking attack against the 388th, winning the bridge with his rather unorthodox tactics. Olala, City of Death. Sacrificial Lambs. Mech warrior Allen watched without fear as countless Comstar mechs boiled from the hidden vaults that had suddenly opened around Alpha Heavy. 
They'd known that the city was a trap, and by forcing the Comguards to clamp their jaws upon a mere star rather than the entire cluster, Alpha Heavy had achieved a major victory for the clan. She had only one task, to destroy as many enemy mechs as possible before her summoner fell. Lan's mad dog went down in the first volley, the rest of the star returned fire with mechanical precision, dropping two wyverns and a guillotine. Somehow, the star managed to remain standing through a second round of fire from the white wave of Comguard mechs. Alan's computer reported armour breaches in seven areas, an engine hit, and the loss of her large pulse laser. Triggering her gauss rifle, she watched with satisfaction as the silver sphere punched through the midsection of an already damaged Kintaro. The explosion from the mech ruptured fusion reactor through the two nearest Congard mechs into the ranks, knocking several down and destroying the aim of many more. The reprieve gained by Alan's disruption of the Congard's formation allowed her and mech warrior Croco to survive another salvo. Eleni was less lucky. Her Hellbringer disintegrated under a barrage of missile, autocannon, and laser and PPC fire. Alan fired on a thug, missing with the Gauss rifle but peppering the enemy's armor with short-range missiles. A sentinel in the rear rank suddenly vanished, and Alan wondered if her Gauss rifle might have found a mark after all. When the aptly named thug sighted its twin particle cannons on her, Alan knew she could fight no more. Just before the beams lashed out, she flicked a last glance at her secondary monitor. Of the entire star, only Star Commander Jula Huddock's executioner still stood. Even in the centre of the Comguard's maelstrom, something in the stance of the commander's mech suggested the relaxed proficiency that had earned Jula Huddock her fame. Her eyes on the executioner, Alan smiled as the enemy PPC filled her viewport with blue light. Situation, Olala, Tukid. As the bulk of the Jade Falcon troops crossed the newly constructed pontoon bridge at Robin's Crossing, the Falcon Guards and 2nd Falcon Regulars set out for Olala. Before Star Colonel Aiden Pride could order his troops into the seemingly deserted city, Jade Falcon military advisor Kale Pershaw noticed incongruities between the city and their path, and the layout of Olala that their briefing had led them to expect. Anticipating a Comstar ambush, Pride allowed the only heavy star of his Alpha Trinary to enter the city. Presenter Minnick and her hidden units lay in wait for the Falcon Cluster, and ended up closing the jaws of their trap around the five mechs of Alpha Heavy. Overwhelmed by the sheer number of their Congard assailants, Alpha Heavy died fighting. Pride's Pride, Blaze of Glory Acolyte Dylan Dre stared, slack-jawed, at the incredible spectacle before him. The White Rhinos had the enemy mech surrounded, and all 18 of his fellow Congards were discharging their energy weapons at it yet it still stood. The Mad Cat faded in and out of Dre's sight, obscured by smoke, dropship exhaust streaming across the battlefield, and the deep darkness of the planet's night. Dre's Star League-era Dynatech targeting computer should have penetrated the Merc easily, but instead, his display flickered unsteadily. Was the clan mech moving slightly or standing still? He wasn't sure, and from the volume of fire missing the lone enemy, he guessed that his companions weren't either. But if the Comguards were unsteady of hand, the Clan Warrior was not. Already, four white mechs lay at the feet of the mech with the bright green falcon emblazed on it. Dre triggered his medium laser, but the beams cut only smoke. What was wrong with his computer? He'd never had any trouble with it before. And why did he have the feeling that he wasn't the only one suffering this mysterious malfunction? A sneaking voice in his head told him that the enemy pilot wasn't human, but instead some unstoppable creature of the night. He shook his head to clear his thoughts of such foolishness, but he couldn't help noticing that none of his companions had dared to close within a hundred metres of this warrior after the first four mechs had fallen. Not that it seemed to matter. The Rhinos had lost at least that many more Comguard mechs in the past hour, victims of the enemy's deadly accuracy. The mist parted slightly and Dre saw the emerald eyes of the Jade Falcon staring at him. Aiming at the insignia, he fired his laser, and this time, the Mad Cat fell. For almost a full minute, no one approached the fallen mech. Then Dre forced himself to move his stinger out from behind the hill, striding forward until he stood over the mad cat. Funny. His monitors all worked fine now. Up close, he saw that the seemingly unscathed clan mech had actually taken quite a beating. Gouges from their lasers, pockmarks from missile hits, oozing craters caused by autocannon rounds covered the Omnimech surface. Circuitry showed everywhere through shattered and burned away armour, 
wires and myoma bundles hanging limp from the mech's frame. Miraculously, the section armour bearing the falcon insignia was actually untouched, save for a single tiny hole between the bird's accusing eyes. None of the warriors of the 104th Division would claim the Mad Cat as a kill. Situation. Presno Plain. Tukiad. As the last of the Falcon Guards boarded their dropships, the lift from Tukiad, a cockpit hit disabled mech warrior down as Warhawk and trapped the young woman in her mech. When Star Captain Joanna revealed to Aiden Pride that Diana was actually his daughter, the Star Colonel chose to remain on the field and engage the approaching Comguards to buy time for Diana's rescue. With Diana safe, Pride found himself unable to break free from the battalion of Comguard mechs, hemming him in. He stood his ground and fought like a man possessed, destroying more than two lances of Comguards and ensuring himself a legendary status among the clans and the successor states. Assault on Robin's Crossing. F f f f fuck. Pride's Pride, Blaze of Glory. Acolyte Dylan Dre stared slack jawed at the incredible spectacle before him. The white rhinos had the enemy mech surrounded, and all 18 of his fellow Comguards were still discharging their enemy weapon. Enemy weapons? The fuck is an enemy weapon? 